Hey, what's up guys? We're gonna look at the electromagnetic spectrum. So the electromagnetic spectrum is a continuous spectrum. That means there's no discrete sections within this. And even though we give the sections names, they all merge and blend into one another. If you think about the colors in a rainbow, the colors in the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. If you look at a rainbow, you don't see specific discrete sections. They all merge continuously into one another. And the same applies across the EM spectrum. So the names of the sections are starting at the long wavelength end, which is over here, radio waves followed by microwaves, then we get infrared. In the middle we have visible light and that's the only section of the EM spectrum that we can see with our eyes. At, high, at shorter wavelengths we have ultraviolet, then smaller even still we have x-rays, and then the very smallest wavelengths are gamma rays. So these are short wavelengths. You should know that the wave equation V is equal to F lambda, frequency times wavelength. And this means that frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. So we can say that radio waves have a low frequency because their wavelength is really large, they have a low frequency. Gamma waves have a short wavelength, therefore they have a high frequency. Another important equation to be aware of is the fact of photon energy. E is equal to HF which means that the energy of electromagnetic photons is directly proportional to the frequency. So radio waves, because they have a low frequency, have a low photon energy. Gamma rays have high frequency, therefore they've got the highest photon energy. Likewise, within the visible light spectrum, violet has a higher photon energy because it's got a higher frequency, and red is the lower frequency in the lower energy end of the visible, of the visible light spectrum. You need to know approximate wavelengths of each of the different sections of the EM spectrum. So I'm gonna start off with the smallest, gamma rays. They've got, there is a range, but I'm just gonna give an approximate value, times 10 to the minus 12 meters, which is really, really, really tiny. X-rays, about times 10 to the minus 10. We're gonna go a little bit longer wavelength now, so we're gonna to go to ultraviolet, which is times 10 to the minus eight. Visible light, you need to know, is approximately 400 to 700 nanometers, which means that the visible light spectrum is of the order times 10 to the minus seven. Infrared has a longer wavelength, so I'm gonna say times 10 to the minus five meters. Microwaves are times 10 to the minus one, and radio waves can be incredibly long, so they can be times 10 to the one or two meters. I'm gonna emphasize this fact that these are not discrete sections. It is a continuous spectrum and there's a range of wavelengths for each of these different sections. A little mnemonic to help you remember is rabbits mate in very unusual, expensive gardens. So that's my quick little mnemonic, rabbits mate in very unusual expensive gardens. And that just helps me remember the order of the EM waves from longest to shortest wavelength. I'm gonna emphasize once more, it's a continuous spectrum. So there's no separation between these different groups. So let's have a look at how electromagnetic waves actually propagate throughout space. The name gives it away, electromagnetic waves. They're caused by oscillations in the electric field and the magnetic field. So down here, I've got an electric field and there's an oscillation in this electric field caused by a moving charge, for example. And when we have an electric field oscillating, this induces a magnetic field to oscillate at 90 degrees to that electric field and it happens just in front of it. And when you have an oscillating magnetic field, it induces an oscillating electric field and this process repeats and the wave starts to propagate throughout space. So that's the reason why they're called electromagnetic waves. It's caused by oscillations in the electric and magnetic fields, and that causes it to propagate throughout um, space without the need for a medium. As you can see from the diagram just drawn, that electromagnetic waves are transverse. And that's because the oscillations in the electric and the magnetic field are both at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. And that's our definition of transverse wave. The oscillations are at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. And because they're transverse, all electromagnetic waves can be polarized. So what do we mean by polarized? The electromagnetic oscillations can occur in any plane at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. So over here, this is an unpolarized 
electromagnetic wave. The oscillations are at any angle, but they're all at 90 degrees to this direction of energy transfer. But if we use a polarizing filter, we can restrict those oscillations to one plane, and we now have polarized electromagnetic waves. So this is a vertical polarizing filter, and it restricts the oscillations into that vertical plane in this instance. So we say that the electromagnetic wave has been polarized. This happens with all transverse waves, therefore all electromagnetic waves can be polarized. Another important fact is about the rate at which these electromagnetic waves can propagate through space. In one second, an electromagnetic wave can travel 300 million meters in a vacuum. So we say that the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. The wave equation, V, so wave speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. So we can just replace the V with C because all electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum. This fundamental speed limit of the universe, three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Nothing in the universe can travel faster than this and nothing with mass can travel at this speed. And electromagnetic photons don't have any mass that's why they're able to propagate throughout space at this incredible speed. It's the fundamental speed limit of the universe. Another property, as I've just mentioned, we just said that the speed is three times 10 to the eight meters per second in a vacuum, which means empty space. But this is important, that electromagnetic waves are actually able to propagate through a vacuum. Sound waves, for example, need particles. They travel through air or through solids because the particles vibrate and collide into each other. Electromagnetic waves are able to propagate through empty space. Simple evidence for this is the fact that you go outside on a hot day, you feel the infrared, you feel the visible light, and you, and you can get burnt where you feel the infrared, you see the visible light, and you can get burnt by this ultraviolet light. And these electromagnetic waves are traveling from the sun to the earth through a vacuum. They do not require a medium. And they're all propagating at this incredible speed, 300 million meters per second. So all of these waves, radio waves, microwaves, all the way to gamma rays, they can all travel through space, through a vacuum at the speed of light. Really important, they do not need a medium. Three more wave properties that all electromagnetic waves can do are shown here. The first one is reflection. What do we mean by reflection? It's simply where a wave bounces off a material. And that's where the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Really simple. And you can demonstrate that with all of these waves. The second one is refraction. And refraction is where an electromagnetic wave, when it meets a new medium, changes speed and it changes direction. So here, the EM wave is traveling through air and it's going incredibly quick. When it meets this glass or perspex block, it slows down and it changes direction. And then when it reaches the boundary of the air, it speeds up again and changes direction once more. So refraction is when a wave changes speed and changes direction and all EM waves can be refracted. The third one is diffraction. And diffraction is where EM waves can spread out when they meet a gap. What's important though is that the gap has to be approximately the same size as the wavelength. So here, the distance between two peaks is the wavelength, and this is our gap. And those two are approximately the same size, so the waves spread out into the space beyond the gap, and that's diffraction. It's very difficult to show with gamma rays, but it is possible because gamma rays have that really tiny wavelength, 10 to the minus 12. So you need very small um, gaps to observe gamma ray diffraction, but it can be done. So in summary, electromagnetic waves form a spectrum and you need to know the names and you need to know the wavelengths, the approximate wavelengths of these and really understand that it's a continuous spectrum. There's no gaps between these and they form a range of different wavelengths and they merge into one another. Let's have a look at the similarities and differences of all the EM waves. They are all transverse because the oscillations are at 90 degrees to the direction of energy transfer. They all travel at the same speed, three times 10 to the eight meters per second in a vacuum. And they can travel through a vacuum. They do not need a medium through which to propagate. And they're all able to reflect, refract, and diffract. And another property which I haven't covered in this video is that they can interfere with one another. The differences are also important. 
They differ in frequency. Gamma rays have high frequency. Radio waves have a low frequency. They differ in wavelength. Radio waves have very long wavelengths and gamma rays have very small wavelengths. And photon energy given by E equals HF or E is equal to HC over lambda. So gamma rays have the highest photon energy and radio waves have the lowest photon energy. Because they're all transverse, they can all be polarized, which is where you restrict the oscillations to one plane. So that's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.